Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Kellen. I'm Sam. Today we're having a look at Copper Dog. Alrighty, uh, today we're in Copper Dog. This one's a bit of a cheap one. Uh, 60 bucks. 60 bucks ish. Budget E. Um, yeah, budget ish. Budget E for Australia. Um, now, this is named after two things. It's one of them. Uh, more like closely, more relevant is uh, the bar. Uh, it's located at the famous Kregelki Hotel uh, called Copper Dog. Mm -hmm. It is also um, the name of a tool used like with illicit stills. It's to like sample and move into different barrels and stuff, kind of like a angel share. No, not angel share. What are they called? The you, know, you, you put them in the, the plug, plug them. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. Um, Damn it, I knew the name of them, but anyway, it's kind of like an early version of those. Um, but yeah, so it's basically made up of all Speyside whiskeys, uh, eight different single malt, or eight, yeah, eight different malt whiskeys. Um, no age statement, 40% ABV, batch number 160673. There's not a whole lot. To say aside from that, there's been a little bit of kind of like, it's been up and down with the reviews from mm. what we've seen. Um, I mean, I only picked it up because it's you heard it's Craig Ellick, you heard yeah, yeah, I, I, some I, sort of association with the whiskey we actually enjoy. I, mean, I heard that. Plus, it's a cheap blend, so yeah. if it's nice. And at this, this point, yeah. how many reviews? Are nearly like 200, where like 150 or something. 160. Yeah. I mean, We've done a few now, so finding like just readily available local yeah. ones. I want something that's on par with like Monkey Shoulder. Well, in terms of from what we've heard, kind of is. Yeah. I was, I'm so, I'm just finished work, it's like late at night, and I was just about to say, ah, oh, you've already tried it. We're holding the. Oh my god. <laughs> it, finish this one quickly. Get some sleep. <laughs> um, it's very butter. sweet. Butter, sweet, sweet, butter, yes, butterscotch, yeah. Laurel, malt. It's very space it's super, <laughs> It is, it is. And I think the, like, using malt whiskey, um, replacing, like, grain whiskey for blends, mm. um, using malt whiskey can, like, really help take out a lot of the sharp, crap, young stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is used. Um, so, hopefully this is just, like, very, very smooth. Because... Mm. I mean, like we, it's not, we don't necessarily like smooth as like the only kind of, you know, factor in the whiskey, but it is something that people do like and we can appreciate and at this price and the A way it's marketed, it, it seems it. like that's yeah. probably where it's being Ain't deliberately that. directed. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. hopefully that's what it stands up to. We're not going to be assessing this for, you know, mad complexity and kind of like to blow you away, keep you up nice after the alcohol. We just want to be a, an easy drinker. Um, like you said, kind of like on par with a monkey shoulder, yeah, yeah, introductory. Yeah. But, uh, from memory though, after smelling this, even monkey shoulder is quite a bit more had more body, like, malt, malt yeah. heavy, and more bo more body. Yeah. This smells just like really, you kind really of have to go searching for it. Sweet, and you have to put um, like sticky nose in. Yeah, I know the glasses are perfect, but no, Dude, we are so we're in the middle. We've mentioned this before. But we're in the middle of a move and like a big ass move where it's like everything. Um, and there's like two different house, no, three different three houses, houses we're trying to get different stuff from. And it's been it's a, a little bit of a mad show trying to work both of us like we 40 hours a week. Seven days hours a week. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, it's been yeah. chaos. We like just acquired salt and pepper for the place like after seven days in. So yeah, so off topic, but the fact that we haven't got playing cans yet is kind of like the least of our Soon, worries at this hopefully point. hopefully we're um, sorted. Um, Go back to the nose. Waxy nuts. And vegetation now. You're getting Sweet. that like green vegetation now? Not really, at best like wet hay. Yeah. I'm getting like mine's all just like butterscotch. <laughs> I'm getting foliage. Like just wet leaves. I, I, I can get like the wet hay kind of thing. I'm not getting it's not green for me though. Mm. Oh, it's kind of morphing into like a lemon, but like a, a t lemon tea, like the dry. I don't know what. I don't even know what the hell lemon tea is made out of. It. It's like a. Yeah, I don't know. Isn't it like leaves? Like is it lemon grass or something? I don't know. But it's something a bit more earthy and dry. Yeah, and it's not like just fresh zest or sour or anything. It tastes like a space on. That maltiness kind of takes a. Gone. I was just trying to count, like since it's actually like sipping it, and yeah. 
to finish done is that that was it. The malt in it's kind of like disappears and it's more honey sweet. Up it's front. very honey malt um, for me. Like there is malt in there. It's kind of you know how like I was when you taste like, really dimples, malty. but like yeah, yeah, with yeah. that malt turned down and mm. even the honey turned down. Yeah, but, like it's the same gist, just kind of like it's very watery you know. as well. It's pretty thin. <laughs> I'm getting actually a black. I mean, it's forty percent. Getting a black tea aftertaste, like a bitterness, like yeah. that dry, yeah, yeah. that dry kind of black tea note. I'm getting that on the nose now. The black tea. The sweetness has subsided a bit. Somehow the sweetness on the palate kind of like matched the sweetness uh, on the nose. So the nose is actually a little bit less sweet. It's so sweet on the on the palate. It's just sweet honey malt. That lemon's kind of coming through as well, like maybe the lemon zest. Almost. Yeah, it's pretty light now though. Yeah. It's more just that sweet note, it's not really balanced with a lot of other things. Yeah, it's just yeah. sweet, slight earthiness. The waxy nut note definitely is there, like some mm, walnuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially on the finish it turns to walnuts because it's got that kind of like bitter aftertaste. Mm. What would you rank this in all the body bands? I reckon it's not, it's not bad. I've got, See, it's just a bit watery. The thing is... <sighs> I don't know, it's such a, to rank like blends is yeah. such a hard thing to do because one budget here is so like, yeah. it's just a term that's like so loosely used because anything below like 70 is budget here. Um, but also like it depends on the area as well. So if I'm looking like a budget, but like this one's high in Highland malt and the other one, you know, it's all Highland yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, or, and you know, and this one's like all Speyside. I'm going to choose this one because it's just like, if I'm looking for a blend, I'm looking for an easy sipper mm. and a space side is going to tick the boxes. Just typically tend towards that more naturally than the Highland world. It's got, the Highland's got more pepper and uh, more malt and mm. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so it's hard. I guess, see that there's not, there's no like, uh, uh, there's nothing offensive about this. It's just the only criticism really is about what's lacking in it, yeah. not what is there that shouldn't be. I think that's a good, that, that's a distinction that needs to be made, that do any reckon, problems I have isn't because there's something bad yeah, in it, yeah, yeah. it's just there's not enough good things. Do you reckon Coke would kill this? Because budget blends you normally, oh. most people blend when you're buying a budget whiskey. I, yeah. Would this hold up? Because it's really I hold up. I, it's I, don't sweet think, I, don't think, I don't think anything doesn't hold, hold up with Coke though. It's not, no one's looking for it to hold up. It needs to taste like generic whiskey, and I think this will definitely do it. Mm. It might be too sweet though. Yeah, might that be. might be my only thing. Because I tried stuff. sweet. No, I tried sweet. I tried <laughs> dimples with Coke, and I was like, nah, that's like yeah, 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 it's yeah. syrupy. It's like too much. And I'm not a Coke person, especially a whiskey yeah, Coke both, person, because it's just too exactly. sweet. Um, the same reason I absolutely despise cider. Mm. It's just that like it, I the feel sweet. sick yeah. from. The, the, the flavor, the sugariness before I feel sick from the alcohol yeah, like, yeah, with yeah. cider. Like, so like, that's why I wouldn't be able to drink much of this. I um, much prefer the nose, by the way. Compared to the palate. Like they're both, there there is, there's more honey butter in this. Honey like, butter. This tastes like that, you know when you get like, um, it's like whipped honey butter and it's got like some, you put it, you get it, I forget where you get it, but like some cafes do it, it's like whipped butter with honey in it and some like cinnamon and like, mm, a touch yeah. of nutmeg. It's like this spiced whipped honey butter. Um, and that is awesome. I, that, that shit's great. Um, and that's more what I'm getting on the nose. The taste is more this kind of like bit dull, malty sweetness. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's not very complex. Uh, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't need to be. Uh, it's probably not designed to be either. To be that's what I mean. It, but it doesn't. It, I don't think it was meant to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think if you're looking for something to sip on, this probably isn't it. But also, if you're brand new to whiskey or you're trying to introduce someone to it, I would I would say that this is probably actually a good thing to start with for mm. sipping on. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for a mixer, this would be good. But also, you could probably find cheaper mixers because at that point, if you're Johnny Red. If you're mixing it, yeah, um, the flavor impact Even is pretty shop minimal. Is cheaper than this. Monkey Shoal is fifty-ish. This is sixty. So Monkey Shoal is a lot more malty. A lot it's got more, a lot more like, body as well. Body. It's got more body, but I, <laughs> I was gonna send some people away, but I prefer this to Monkey Shoulder now. Oh, no, I yeah. used to much prefer Monkey Shoulder when I first got into into Scotch, mm. um, but. 
it's too malt funky, like mildew yeah, yeah, yeah. for me now. I've been off that note for quite a while now. I think it coincided with me getting enthusiastic with bourbon. Mm. It has kind of accent accentuated that. Um, so I'd still tend toward this, if that says anything to someone who is feeling the same way about that kind of weird maltiness. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, we probably rambled on too long on this video for something that we've said very little about. Um, <laughs> It's good, it's just lacking a ton of character, but yeah. if that fits whatever you're use, wanting to, a whiskey to do, then this will do it. Um, so but you yeah. have a watered down space, or generic space. Or yeah, a really, really friendly space side yeah. of it, a bit watered too down. thin. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this episode of Everything Whiskey, leave us like. If you want to see future episodes from us, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you do, we'll see you next one. Cheers. Cheers.